We've got tips and recipes for healthy living. So for fun and inspiration, come and join us in the raw food world. Welcome everybody, this is Matt Monarch and... Angela Stokes Monarch. With the Raw Food World TV show. Yeah, we've been MIA for quite some time. Missing in action. And there's a good reason for it. We've been busy. Extremely busy. Remember a few a week ago, about 10 days ago, we went to Porto Carpus and we were just like dumbfounded by the entire way of life there. Just completely wild, the pure air and everything. Well, on the way out, we saw a for sale sign. It was kind of a little bit far, pretty far from Puerto Carpus inside the gates. And then um, it, it just got me thinking. So the next day we came back to Puerto Carpus and we went as close as we possibly could to the actual national park. And we found the person who lived closest. We hunted him down for three days actually. We, st wait, we, heard, we asked his neighbors, they said he comes here every day at 7.30 a.m. We waited for him. And before you knew it, what happened? We negotiated a deal. Baba. We purchased 300 hectares bordering Porto Carpus. National Forest. National Forest. So, just when you think it can't get better in Vilcabamba, living in that ideal property, we're leaving it behind. Baba. No, it's our it's our summer home whenever we want to go and party there. There's a lot of stuff happening there that we haven't showed you also. We haven't given you a land update. But that's grown quite a bit too. So, we're just going to give them a panorama real quick. What do you think? Sure. Okay. Portocarpus. Our next door neighbor. That's our next door neighbor, everybody. That's Portocarpus. I think you can see the Porto Carpus River. So, on our 300 hectares of land, there's 12 springs that we found so far, but there's probably more than that. Small itty bitty waterfalls. And we're talking 12 springs. We put a TDS counter in there. It was like 10 TDS. And the water comes straight from the National Forest Porto Carpus. Pristine water, elevation, goes from the bottom peak way down there. Our border is that river. 6,000 6, foot to 9,000 feet high. Right now we're about 8,500, 9,000 feet high where we're standing right now. And that's where we're gonna build a house. There's just so much on this land, of course. You know, it's 300 hectares, more or less, and it's like, I mean, there's Bodocarpus, and the parts of this land are also like ancient primal protected forest. There's also an entire pine forestation that was put in about a decade ago. Um, there's just literally thousands and thousands of pine trees out here, and some of them are more or less mature, some of them are babies. It's amazing, we're like we're never going to run out of Christmas trees <laughs> or pine pollen. The beauty about this is we're right next to a national forest that can't be cut down. This is like primal. This looks like the green beautiful. It looks like the Lord of the Rings. We bought 300 hectares. That's like probably how many miles that way? 10? I don't know. Many miles. It's all ours, so it can't be taken down. We are in jungle for the rest of our lives. Pure, pristine forest. And there's the, the river. And then there's um, flatlands throughout, and there's um, areas that have been cleared for cattle ranching. So there's a lot of cows through this whole land right now. The soil is just ridiculous because of that. Soil is amazing. Maybe at some point we'll show you. Some of it's just like, it's, it's literally almost black. It's so dark. And so there's all these flat areas and green pastures and, um, there's like big gardens where they're growing stuff in some areas and 
It's just so much diversity. There's even wild animals that come through from the National Forest through onto this land. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. The air here is so rich. Woo. It's like you just we drive here and we get out of the car and it's like oh, thank you. It just you can feel it as it goes into your body. It just feels so damp and like nourishing the air. It's incredible. And today as you can see, it's windy and it's raining. Um, it's not that bad though. And it's not it's normally it's like sunny and yeah yeah and it, we're just so excited that we don't even care whether it's raining or not <laughs> we're just so deliriously in love with being at this place we didn't come here for the last two days uh, we came every single day for a week before that we didn't come for the last two days and my body my being was literally just like yearning to be here so we we came out here today even though it's raining and windy we were like it's we not just, raining right now really we yeah. gotta go it comes and goes <laughs> yeah i'm in the most the best shape i've ever been in because we've been hiking every single day here except for the last day for hours for hours through the forest and all sorts of crazy things now i'm very thankful that we found this land and that it's ours because there's so much flat land here and diversity someone could literally come here take this buy this place and sell off plots and make tens of millions of dollars seriously there are so many flat areas to build if people wanted to it's crazy we're gonna conserve this place we're just gonna build our home there's a couple friends that are gonna come come and join us that we're really close to and uh, yeah it's beautiful I love it I think we should show them the place where we're gonna build okay it's right over this ledge over here I'm just gonna show them I'm walking to it right now. Miles and miles of just ridiculousness here. I can't believe nobody's found this. Check it out, this is where we're building. In the future, on the TV show, you're gonna see this area a lot more. There's actually all these Ecuadorian homes too all over the place that we're kind of inheriting for where their workers are staying, where workers stay here and stuff. Yeah. And it's so interesting, this land, um, it's been in the hands of the current owners for at least the last 30 years. So there's, it's just so clean. There's like nothing here except like cow dung and, you know, just a few little houses and just forests and flatlands and grasslands. River. And the Podocarpus wasn't declared a national forest until 82 and this land was bought by the guy who owned this whole valley originally in 1980 so he just bought this whole valley because he wanted a place to raise cows and it just happened that he lucked out and he bought the valley that ended up being right next to the national forest so now 30 something years later it's ours it's ours and we feel extremely blessed to be taking over stewardship of just this incredible piece of land. Nobody, they weren't even selling. We hunted them down. Awesome. Let's show them a little bit more. Okay. Okay, see you in a bit. <laughs> situation going on. Whoa. You give Hi. them one you give them one piece of coconut meat and they go crazy. We're not keeping the pigs. Here's one of the Ecuadorian houses. The air is so clean up here that I have no desire to eat food. It's crazy. Alright guys. Me and Angela were just walking like another mile on the land and we're just in a whole nother location and it keeps going miles and miles.
And there's another really good flat spot over here. There's road access. There's, wa there's water. There's electricity. It's like the men that lived here for decades on end took care of all this. Check this out. I mean, there's spots like this everywhere. All right, everybody. There's so much to show. There's so much to, we'll just, it would be like hours and hours of footage. There's this one area that's like all grassy lands. There's another area that's all forest. There's a whole other area that's all river. It's so beautiful everywhere. It's the next day and we came back to show you what we call the grassy lands. Do we? Yes. Grassy lands. Yesterday was where we're gonna be living by. This is where other people will probably be living by. This is, uh, it's just like totally different microclimates everywhere. We're gonna come here and we're gonna go down to the river and show you something totally magical. But here it is. All about, all, everything you're about to see is part of our property. It's like Tolkien land, like Hobbit land. Hobbit land, like Lord of the Rings. And it goes all the way to the river. And where we were yesterday, you see where that sun is kind of peeking out on the mountain over there? It goes past that. If you go down the mountain line and you see like a little white house over there, not this first white house, it's really close, but way back there, that's our property over there. It's crazy. And then it just comes. Look at all this flat land just for whatever. And then that's all Puerto Carpas. That's all Puerto Carpas. Way back there is Puerto Carpas. Like way back there is Puerto Carpas. Yeah. All right, let's go show them around. Okay, check it out. Up there is just where we came from. Just goes. All right, everybody, here is one of the 12 springs that we found so far on our land. It's coming straight out of the mountain if you go further up in there. Right over there, we just put a pipe in like it's down here, and we have pure spring water. It's not even the rainy season, and it's just crazy water from Puerto Carpas. More to come. Everybody check this out. There's a pipe you can see that comes all the way across to right here. That's spring water right there. And there's a bunch of these all over the land for like the animals. It's awesome. Short walk. Right. Direction. Um, this is all the property. We're coming down on what they call the luxury house here. There's an horchata business, all those red leaves. We're actually he heading, to, headed to the magical river area, as you'll see soon. And then there's a whole family living here. Yeah. Here's one of the workers. I think he wants to have a job still. We're gonna have a nice talk with him. Yeah, I wanna show you guys this. This is what they consider a luxury house in Ecuador. Buenas. Como le va? Bien, you too? <laughs> Crazy. This is what they consider luxury. If you go inside, this thing needs a lot of work. But yeah. All right, everybody. We're right by the magical river area. This is beautiful, but it just gets even more magical. This is just crazy. So how'd it go with the owner, babe? The owner? I mean, not the owner, the worker. The worker. Does he, He's he, very sweet. He really wants a job? Guy. He wants a job. He has only been working here a month, he said. 
Yeah. But he's very well known as a cattle guy. He's been trying to encourage us to keep lots of cows so that he can work here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, strong guy. He was just like. Uh... Yeah, so we inherited all sorts of crazy stuff on this land. That luxury house I just showed you. Luxury. And we're about to show you um, the place where they milk the cows and they've got electric machinery and everything. And then past that is where the river area just gets ridiculous. All right, everybody, we're heading to the milking area of the cows. There have been cows on this land for a very long time, creating the most amazing soil in the world here. Everywhere you walk, you kind of dodge the cow poop. Oh, look at these little critters. Hi, guys. Here's where they milk the cows. Look at that, there's a cow machine right there. And now we're about to go see something really special. Right around this corner where the river is, is so magical. So we got grassy lands, forest area, wildness, high elevation, low elevation, river area. And check this out. But this is one of the springs coming straight up from the mountain. This is sacred area. Uh, what do we got here? A friend? Yeah, I got a friend right here. Oh, what do you know? <laughs> Mr. Monarch in his true form. Monarch <laughs> Mountain. Thanks for joining us, we'll see you again at the Raw Food World.